Hello YouTubers and welcome to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video and today we're going to talk about cabinet residences and I'm going to show you a couple of ways of how to take care of them. Cabinet residence in its simplest form is when the mid-base driver or subwoofer exerts pressure on the cabinet walls causing them to resonate. Think of it this way. As the speaker driver moves, it's pumping air within the enclosure. This pumping of air puts pressure on the cabinet walls, which can cause them to flex and resonate. This flexing motion of the cabinet walls can create unwanted sounds, basically sounds in addition to what is already being produced by the driver. We call these unwanted sounds coloration. Basically, we want to prevent the speaker cabinet from becoming an instrument itself introducing unwanted sounds from the recording that you're trying to listen to. The first way to find cabinet resonances is to do an impedance sweep on the speaker using a tool like the Dayton Audio DATS V3. This tool is a very valuable resource to have for any audio enthusiast and is relatively inexpensive considering what it can offer. This tool will set you back about $130 and it's a must have especially if you build your own speakers. Here I'm doing an impedance sweep on the Dayton Audio T652 speaker to see if the cabinet is resonating. Here are the results from that impedance sweep. Do you see the three humps between the 200 to 300 hertz range that I circled in red? This is the result of the speaker cabinet resonating during the impedance sweep. If you don't have a Dayton Audio DATS V3, then there is another method to find cabinet resonances. It's less scientific, but it's what I used as a young guy to fix up my budget speakers to make them sound better. It's called the good old knock test, and let me show you how it works. So to perform the good old fashioned knock test, all you need is your fist banging up against the side of this cabinet wall. So you just give it a good old knock. I don't know how well that sound is coming in on camera, but let me describe it to you. When I knock the side of this cabinet wall with my fist, the cabinet sounds extremely hollow and I can hear it ringing. And there's even a small echo in this room every time I knock on the side of this. Now this is a bone stock Dayton Audio T652 speaker, which is made of half inch MDF construction. Now I haven't done anything to it. This is my other Dayton Audio T652 speaker, which I have done something to. Now let me show you the differences between these two speakers and how they sound when I perform the knock test on them. So untreated versus treated. I don't know how well you guys can hear that, but let me describe the sound that's coming from this speaker, which has been braced up quite a bit. So this is a nice, solid thud sound. When I hit the side of this cabinet with my fist, it sounds very well braced and thick. It doesn't resonate anywhere near as bad as this one. This one just continues to ring and ring. So basically, that's what you're striving for. You want that low thud sound when you knock it like that boom done whereas on this one it just continues to resonate and you can hear it throughout the room so how did i get this speaker to sound as quiet as it does let me show you i call this method for combating cabinet resonance the laminating process this process involves purchasing a sheet of MDF and cutting it in a fashion so the individual pieces can be laminated to the inside walls of the speaker cabinet. Basically, you're gluing the sheets of MDF that you cut to the inside walls to brace them, which will in turn minimize the cabinet from resonating. This process is a bit more time consuming and does require some tools. When I was younger, I used to perform this process with only a jigsaw and wood glue. So having big dollar power tools is not necessary. Please keep in mind though that when using a jigsaw to cut the boards that they will not always come out perfectly straight. But that doesn't really matter because it's all about accomplishing the goal. 
which is to cover as much surface area inside the cabinet with MDF. If you have a small opening between boards because you couldn't get a perfectly straight cut, don't worry about it because it won't compromise the strength of the wall that much. Just keep in mind that the laminating process does alter the internal dimensions of the enclosure, which will affect the tuning of the speaker. There are ways to combat the change in enclosure volume by using damping material that will trick the speaker into thinking that it's in a larger enclosure than it is. Some of these materials include stuffing or lining the enclosure with polyfill, fiberglass filling, carpet padding, and rock wool, just to name a few. I would only use the fiberglass filling in sealed enclosures because the glass fibers that they contain can escape out of the porthole in the base reflex design. Once I was done with the laminating process, I would then use carpet padding to dampen the enclosure with. In my opinion, carpet padding is a cheap and effective way to absorb unwanted standing ways within a speaker enclosure. But feel free to use whatever you want. There are plenty of products out there in various price ranges that can do the same thing. If the laminating process looks a bit overwhelming, then there is a second method to help reduce resonance that is much easier to apply, and all you need is a pair of scissors to install it. So what is it? Ever heard of Dynamat? Yep, those are the makers of that expensive peel and stick dampening material that is marketed towards the car audio crowd. But this type of material also works well at dampening cabinet residences. You don't need to purchase the overpriced butyl rubber sheets from Dynamat. Any peel and stick material made out of butyl rubber will work just as well. I recently used the Amazon Basics version of this product to line the inside of my Franken Klipsch subwoofer cabinet, and it did a great job of reducing unwanted residences. The best part about this product is that it's very easy to apply. Here I'm using a measuring tape and scissors to cut the product and line the inside of the cabinet walls with it. I have even used this dampening material to cover the flared port ends to prevent them from resonating. This stuff is very easy to work with and can stick to just about anything. If you think the plastic port is resonating, no problem, just apply some peel and stick to it. If you think the center brace is resonating, no problem, just apply some peel and stick to it. These are just a few of the methods that I have used with good results to combat residences within the cabinet. I have used these methods to improve the sound quality for my budget speakers and I hope this video shows that it isn't too hard to apply some of these tricks to improve the sound quality from your speakers. If you're just getting started out in this hobby, then don't be afraid to try other methods. A lot of what I have learned has been from trial and error. Obviously these aren't the only methods that can help tame cabinet residences. So if you have another method that is just as effective, please share it with us by leaving a comment down below. I started this channel a few years ago because of my addiction to this hobby and wanted to interact with other like-minded individuals just like myself. After receiving some very intelligent feedback in the comments section, it became apparent that there are a lot of people out there who know a lot more about speaker design and acoustic engineering than I do. So definitely take a look at the comments section because I'm sure these people will share some of the tips and tricks that they use to combat residences as well. Anyways, I hope this video is helpful to you and gives you the motivation to take those budget speakers to the next level. So long and happy listening.